Hey y'all, welcome to Stiver's Homestead. I'm Zach, and today is Lufa Day and Sweet Potato Day. So it's a big last harvest that we have. Um, and we're doing this because we're going to have a frost while we're gone in HOA. So that means we need to get all of these things harvested and put up to start drying the lupas and curing the sweet potatoes. So I'm going to take y'all along with me, try to explain that process to you and enjoy the time. Last little bit that we have in the garden before it gets real stinking cold. I know you've been eating lupas. I've seen you. Yep, I sure have. Not cool, man. Okay, loofah gourds in general. So let's kind of give a little backstory here real quick before we get going. Lufa is a gourd. It can also be eight if it's eight in the small state, kind of like, well, no, you want it smaller than that. But if you kind of get in like the cucumber zucchini size, you can eat them. We have done it. They are nasty in our opinion. They're not good. So loofahs can get real big like this guy here. And the whole point of this is inside of there is a sponge, but the sponge only becomes once it completely dries out. The biggest misunderstanding of loofahs is that they have to dry out on the vine. And that is not true. All of these will be going down in our basement and they will dry on their own once they stop getting that life to them. There are some on here that I'll show you that are that did dry up. They were some of our first fruit. But unless you're in the deeper south, like in the zones eight and nines, most likely you're gonna have to be doing what we're doing and pulling them off green and then letting them dry up. Please understand that they will. For the most part, as long as they're at a decent size, if they're real little, they're probably not going to. They just take a little bit longer because it's gonna be inside, but you can still have loofahs by the time spring comes. So let's get on this massive jungle. For the record too, two plants. This was two plants, one on that side of the cattle panel and one on that side. And it took over everywhere mixed with our Mexican sunflower. This is a good example of one starting to dry out. See how much lighter green it is? And it's gonna start feeling lighter on the inside, unlike this guy, who's very dark green still and very heavy. That means that it has not dried out yet. When they are dried, it will be completely brown. Once we get to that point, we will do another video to show you all how to, how to get them out and get the seeds out and then what you can kind of do with these bad boys. <laughs> love gardening this time of year. I'm in a flannel, I'm not itchy, and I'm not sweaty. It is fantastic. I wish things grew better or more things grew in the cooler temps, um, which we have the fall crops. But this is just nice. We got so many loofahs, more than I think we've ever gotten. I'm about to show you all, all of them that we have, um, but I'm really excited. Um, if you don't know, Jen makes her loofah soap out of this, so she'll cut them in circles, pour the soap over top, let them harden, and so the loofahs on the inside. Um, we trial ran that earlier in the year with a few loofahs that we had left, um, but I think most all of these will probably go to that. Um, loofahs are just really cool, and they're, they're beautiful to grow. Um, they bring all kinds of pollinators because there are so many flowers on it, um, and it's just a cool thing, and it provides a lot of beauty. Um, I think we'll, one thing we might do is put a bunch of arches together and just let them take over an entire row because they started choking out our pepper plants, choking out the green beans because they spread out so much once they take off. Um, but let's show you what, how many we got and then what I do to try to take care of all of those vines because I ain't ripping them out now and I'm gonna show you how to do it and not have to worry about that. So this is a 40 gallon tote that we have here and it is basically completely full. I would say there's a hundred, maybe a hundred, yeah, I don't know, maybe 75-ish loofahs that are totally in here. Um, it's a lot. And one massive green tomato that has a little blushing, so we're hoping she'll finish up on the um, windowsill. Yeah, since she started, she should. But man, that's a big one to end it. That might be our last tomato, and it might be our biggest one that we've grown. But there are all the loofahs. You can see we're in a bunch of different stages of life here. Like I said, it's okay. Grab them all, and most all of them will dry up. I'm trying to get this one. So unfortunately this one's kind of broke, so I don't know if this one will make it or not, but this one was starting to dry. I should have put it on top, um, but that's what they start looking like. They get really brown, and once they're completely brown and they're crunchy, that's when you know they've dried out. But that's the amount we did. Now let me show you what we're gonna do with this. So if you got in here and you just started ripping and pulling, you're gonna end up pulling your cattle panel down because everything still has life in it. So it's strong, it's not just gonna break, it's gonna pull. 
So what you can do is, like I said, it's two plants, right? I went in and I just pulled the root up out of that. Now, this is nowhere near the roots, that the full amount of roots. These things probably went all the way around this bed at least 20 times. The root system's insane. But as long as you break the life from it on each end, which here's the other one, just let these vines die. Once they die, they'll get crunchy and they're so much easier to remove off your cattle panels than trying to do it like this because it is like the best spider web you'll ever see if you try to start pulling now. So when we get back from HOA, these should be nice and dead and then we'll actually clean this bed out. Now, I'm gonna have to drag this thing because it is way too heavy for me to pick up. That is so many loofahs, it's amazing. I don't need your help, Rusty. Welcome to our basement. It's dark, so you won't be able to see this part very much. Uh, it's dark, intentional where our food is, just so the light can't get to it. Um, but I'm going to be putting all these loofahs up on a rack, a bunch of racks that we have. I'm just gonna place them anywhere they'll go, and then they'll sit there and dry. I will say one more thing about loofahs. I will post a full blown video. It's from start to finish. We explain every step. Uh, we did it a few years ago. If you wanna see every step, this is gonna be more during the time this is what we're doing right now. Then you get to see this process and when that time is coming. But if you want the whole thing, it's down below. Okay, the loofahs are taken care of. What a good year for loofahs. Ah, so just flew right in my bag on here. Sweet potatoes. First, this is our first year ever growing them. I know that seems crazy, but we just never... We keep expanding our gardens. And if you've been around with the previous place, we just never had enough room to dedicate for sweet potatoes. Which is crazy because we love them. We eat them often. Um, we probably eat sweet potatoes more than we eat regular potatoes. Um, so let me talk about the experience before we get into this harvesting. Sweet potatoes were the very first thing that we planted in the garden this year. Um, it's something that does take a while to get going, but it was the first thing that we did. And we did it because we wanted this to look beautiful right here. And it definitely did. It poured over like lava. I've talked about it in so many videos how much we like this. I'm actually going to hate pulling them up because it's going to be bare here. Um, but some things that we saw with the loof or with the uh, sweet potato slip. To our surprise, they're very hardy. They are strong and do not like to die, which is a good thing for something that you're wanting to grow and grow well. It was attacked by chickens. It was attacked by cats when they were little. And all of that worked out well to have big, beautiful sweet potatoes. We didn't put one thing on these to protect from bugs. Unlike potatoes, you know, when you get those potato bugs that come and just completely wipe out your potato plants, these had some nibbles. Like you can see some nibbles on the plants, but that was okay for us. A little nibble here and there is no big deal. These things grew so strong without any care at all. And that is the amazing part of these. So very, very easy to grow. If you've never grown them, grow them, very simple. You can get you, you can make your own slips by using sweet potatoes that you have. Uh, you can buy them. I know uh, we've been talking to Haas, and I think they're going to try to start doing more slips next year. Um, but we didn't. We just got these online at some company. We just googled sweet potato slips and found one. Um, these are Georgia something. When we get into a tag, I'll tell you the exact name. But awesome sweet potatoes. So happy with how they grew. We will definitely add this to the list every single year, and probably continue to expand them depending on how many we get, which we're about to find out. So that's your little sweet potato tutorial of what I have learned this year in growing these sweet potatoes. And now I am so excited to see what's underneath that soil. We only peaked once and it was a sweet potato bigger in my hand. It was huge, huge. So let's see what else we got going on in there. I'm ready. So this is a big L raised bed. I think I'm gonna start on this end and work my way around. And before we do a big time lapse, we're going to get in here together on one and see. So it's going to be hard to specifically find where the slip was because everything's grown. So what I'm kind of doing is I'm just going to kind of start digging in here and kind of pulling up and seeing what we can find. That's a little one. All right, let me use two hands and I'll be back with you. There's another one.
Ah, oh, there we go. That's what we're looking for. Look at that, y'all. I think that's a pretty good size sweet tater. Hey, now it's time for me to get my hands dirty and speed y'all right along with us. Okay, I've gotten most all of it done. I'm not gonna show you just yet what we've gotten, but here's my last ones. And it's been about like this the whole time. Look at this thing. Look at it. It's so big. I don't know how they got so daggone big, but they are. I mean, look at this. They're everywhere. We ain't gonna go hungry this winter. Look at that. Getting quite a few of these little fingerlings, which are just runoffs. No, get, stop it. What is that? <laughs> what is it? How are we gonna eat that? <laughs> we can roast that and that'd be enough for all of us. That don't look right. It don't look right. I don't know about that. That's from Chernobyl. <laughs> that is a whole bunch of sweet potatoes for just this bed i'm serious y'all they are so big almost all of them ginormous size and i'm not 100 sure why i know we got good soil but like this one obvi obviously is a bunch of sweet potatoes into one but i mean it's the size of my head <laughs> look at this That looks like a pumpkin. Obviously they're gonna be fine. They're edible and they're gonna be great. Um, but this being our first year ever growing sweet potatoes, I don't know. I don't know if size is a big deal or not. Um, obviously I know sweet potatoes get big, but these things are like ginormous, big. And you know, things like zucchinis and stuff like that, you don't want them to get too big because then they're not as flavorful or they're more seedy and they're a little tougher. So we'll see. I mean, we're definitely gonna friggin' eat them. That's for daggone sure. Um, but they now need to cure. So that is what we got to do next. We need to get these set up so their skins can get hard to where they'll last over winter. And also, like, I mean, if anything, I pulled them early. We did that because we didn't want anything to happen while we were gone. Um, but really, you want the vines to die back before you harvest them. And ours were still growing. So I couldn't imagine what size they would be if we really waited any longer. Um, so I don't know. If y'all have any ideas, like, is that a good thing? It feels like a good thing. But if not, throw it down there. Let me know from the more experienced sweet potato growers, but I'm addicted because that was really exciting. There's nothing like going into the ground on a root veggie that you're not sure what you're gonna find and find massive, massive fruit coming out of there. And it always makes a gardener's heart feel very good. And there is no way, oh, I can kind of lift it up, but there ain't no way I'm getting that in there full. So I'm gonna have to get buckets. I'm gonna have to get buckets, take some at a time. All right, we're down in the store and we've got a bunch of tables. Let me go that way, set up. Ideally, these would be inside a building, not outside, because there could still be some weather that gets to them. But limited space, a lot of sweet potatoes. At least it's under the porch. Um, and I've checked the radar, it doesn't look like it's gonna rain, so there shouldn't be no splashing. Um, so not ideal, but it's better than keeping them in a tote on top of each other to where they can't cure. Where they can't cure. So mom and I are going to start tackling putting these on there. go two full tables of sweet potatoes like i said i'm happy with the harvest is our first year ever growing them there was a lot of these fingerlings which will be fine those are yummy i mean just like many potatoes but let me know about this size y'all i really need to understand if this is what you want or if this is ideally more what you want obviously that's more of a normal size sweet potato that you would find at a restaurant or a store but i mean some of these are just absolutely insane like this guy and this guy but i don't know let me know there they are and talk about addicting you know regular potatoes you have to you get to plant in the cooler temps but you have to harvest in the heat i mean it is hot when you're harvesting regular old potatoes these you get to plant when it's cool and you get to harvest when it's cool none of sweat broke this time which is completely rare for me um, but it's pretty exciting to have all these so they're gonna cure get that hard skin and then we will um, 
put them in our basement to store over winter. And then we'll bring up probably a, a basket full at a time for us to eat in the kitchen, but super pumped. Thank you.